What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, we've got a couple awesome boxes here, some cool books in these. One, I don't know, maybe a DC spec that, that might look interesting given the whole new like James Gunn thing and everything, but yeah, let's check out these books. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. Got the first unboxing of the new year, uh, so some cool books. Looking forward to see what uh, what I end up picking up this year. It's always, you know, I never really know what I'm going to get. I actually I had some questions about, you know, like buying tips and, and things like that uh, as a follow-up to that video that I was making before. And really like for me because people are asking like what books i target and that kind of thing and it's like for me really i i don't <laughs> you know like to some extent i have books that i'm that i'm thinking about in the back of my mind that you know i'm like oh it'd be great if that one came up for sale um but really i i just i look for books that i think are good prices i like to focus on keys that kind of thing and that's that's really what i do um i i'm not picky about what i buy and you know every once in a while one of those books that I really, you know, have been interested in overlaps with one of those books that comes up for a good deal. And that's how I end up with books on my, my keeper list. Uh, but yeah, this first box here, uh, not actually from eBay, but uh, pick this one up from A1 Comics. They have sales a number of times a week. Uh, and generally, it seems like about... 9 30 eastern time because they 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 are doing kind of, it's almost like their sales broken up into two parts where they have kind of like modern silver bronze that kind of stuff and then when it gets like 9 30 they have their like their head grader come on and he's doing mostly golden age books and uh, so that's always just a, a time when sometimes i'll i'll check in to see if there's anything real interesting that uh, that appeals to me and know everything in this unboxing is in golden age books so don't worry if you're not interested in golden age there's there's other stuff uh, in here too some silver age and maybe bronze i don't remember i think there's definitely some silver age in here though um but this was one of those times that uh they had a number of golden age books and some that i was interested in and um, i ended up let's see I think I made an offer on one and outright claimed the other, something like that. Uh, but let me get all this packaging bubble wrap and stuff up here. There is, I don't remember if it was two slabs. Yeah, it looks like it is two slabs. Is it two slabs? Huh, for some reason I thought one of them was a raw. Maybe not. <laughs> but I guess it's two slabs, so... Uh... But yeah, I definitely remembered one of them. Oh, I guess they were both slabs. Ugh, I don't know. Memory. I probably knew that, um, but uh, I don't know. Sometimes, I, you know, I guess I buy too much stuff. So, but yeah, it is, uh, it is definitely two slabs. And one of them is pretty cool because it's kind of like a unique production flaw. It's one of those production flaws that's actually desirable. They're, production flaws aren't always desirable. Sometimes they are, and... Uh, Sometimes they aren't. Um, so here's the first one. This is the uh, this is the production flaw book. And so I'd say like an example of like non-desirable production flaws. It would be things like printer creases. You know, printer creases, you know, they, they detract from the appearance of the book, but they don't impact the grade. Um, then you have things like desirable production flaws like this one. Uh, and I'll go over this one a little bit. Uh, but this is Tales from the Crypt number 38. This is a great Jack Davis cover. And the interesting thing with this one is that, I mean, yeah, the cover is pretty crazy already. You know, you've got this, you know, just a guy who's clearly kind of like out of his mind uh, attacking or just <laughs> somebody that's already dead in a coffin or you'd assume is already dead in a coffin. But the thing with this one is that this was not the original cover. Uh, the original cover, this was an edited, this was like a pared down version. Uh, the original cover actually had limbs coming out of it. And uh, if you see the original cover art for it, you can actually see what it was supposed to be. If I can find it, because uh, I, I think I know where I can get uh, a screenshot of that, I'll, I'll throw the picture up there. If I don't, then you don't get to see it. But uh, the original cover did have like limbs and stuff like coming out of this coffin that this guy's attacking. Uh, but yeah, definitely a lot of, you know, these 
axe themed covers like Vault of Horror 35, um, Crime Suspense Stories 22, Tales from the Crypt 38. These are these are definitely some of the bigger books in the run. This is a this is a pretty big one in the run. But the cool thing with this double cover, so. Uh, you see it's a 5.5. Five. The double cover is that the first cover is a 4.5 and the interior cover is a 5.5. And I have not had very many double covers. I mean, I've had a, quite a few books and I think I've only had two or three other double covers. I had an X-Men 8 double cover and I had a Sensation Comics like 49 or something like that, like an early Wonder Woman double cover. The one where it's like an homage to Action 1 where she's throwing this car. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, so the way that double covers work, because I, I hear some things out there and, and I, I hear the explanation done incorrectly fairly often. So uh, what people often say is that with a double cover or a multiple cover, because it's not always just two, you can have tons of covers. I've seen somewhere it's like up to seven, maybe more than that. But there's like a, what was it? Like a Amazing Spider-Man 361 and it was like a 9.97 .9 cover book, something like that. It's crazy. <laughs> but uh uh, but the way the multiple covers work is that you get the grade for the highest graded cover. Uh, so I hear a lot of people will say they're like, oh, you get the grade for the interior cover. And it just happens to be that a lot of the time the interior cover is the higher grade, which it is in this case. You can see interior cover 5.5, first cover 4.5. But that's not always the case. Like my that Sensation Comics I had, the outer cover was the higher grade cover. It was like an 8.5 and the interior cover was like a 4.5 or a 6 or something. If I can find a picture of that one, I'll, I'll throw that up too, but probably won't find that one. Um, but yeah, so the way multiple covers work is you get the grade for the highest graded cover. It's not an average. It's not the interior cover. It's the highest graded cover. Uh, that is what you get. If you see something that's other than that, it means that it was a mistake in the grading, but because that is, that is what it is. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is an awesome cover. I like the kind of like the blue green on the top there. I think it looks cool and just great Jack Davis cover. Here's the back. But yeah, sharp looking book. And uh, so, yeah, that was a cool one to pick up. I just, I don't get the opportunity to pick up multiple covers very often. And it's a great book too, because that's the other part of it. It's like a double cover, the bigger the key, kind of like the more added value it'll have. And it's not like there's like a firm rule for multiple covers. It's Kind of like, you know, it's a niche collectible area where some people will say they won't pay more for that, you know, that unique production flaw. Some people will. All right. Now, this is a cool one, too. So uh, this one had a really big sale. I remember like last year or two years ago that threw this book specifically kind of like into the spotlight uh, as being, I'd say, probably the biggest. Uh, I don't know if it'd be the biggest book in the run, but close to it. Uh, but this is a Golden Age pre-code horror book. This is Chilling Tales number 15. And, you know, so you've got, it's like a hanging cover. You've got all these demons or ghouls or whatever you want to call them uh, that are dragging this guy off. They're carrying the gallows with him and, you know, that they're going to hang this guy. Um, but uh, <laughs> kind of a weird, like how he's like, you know, straight out like that. It always looks kind of funny, but... Um, but yeah, there was a really big sale. I remember on Heritage, like, you know, maybe a year and a half ago or something. And it, it really kicked off, uh, some hunting for this book because these are, these are pretty uncommon books. This Chilling Tales run, it's got a real cool, you know, like heading where you've got the skull in there and everything like that. But, but yeah, 3 uh, was definitely graded recently because it's got the QR code on the back. Um, but yeah, I just, I thought the, the price was reasonable. I decided to, to pick it up. I just haven't had... Uh, hadn't had an opportunity to to pick up a copy of this book. So cool book, Pre-Code Horror, Chilling Tales, number 15. All right, now, second box here. So this one is from Heritage. There should be, I think, two slabs. I think I got two slabs, and then I bought a, a, a lot of books. Uh, so I've had some people ask about that as well, like where can you buy like lots and that kind of thing. And one place that you can buy them is Heritage. Uh, sometimes they are great deals, sometimes they are not. Um, I picked up some EC lots from them uh, relatively recently that, that were, you know, I felt I got really good prices on those. Uh, this, this one, I... <laughs> I feel like I looked at it a little closer afterwards and I think they, they overgraded these. And so um, I think I paid maybe a little too much for them, but you know, what you gonna do? 
uh, it's not that big a deal. Um, but uh, let's see. So there's there's a lot of I think that they were all Fantastic Four books uh, that were raw, and then like I said a couple a couple graded books. So. Oh, okay, so here's that. I've also got here that uh, that book that I think may be kind of like a DC spec type book, and uh, oh, then yeah, I almost forgot about that one. That's a cool one too. All right, and then this that means this is the Raws over here. So let's go over the Raws first. Uh, this is from a run too that I feel like these have just been getting a little too cheap again. And so I've definitely been on the kind of on the lookout for them. So this is, oh, this is five books. I was thinking it was four, but five books. First one here, never actually owned a copy of this book. Uh, this is Fantastic Four number 45. So this is the first appearance of the Inhumans. I think that they had said all of these were four O's and uh, these are, I mean, these are not four O's. <laughs> like, these aren't four O's at all. Um, like, they have, like, multiple extra staples added, which means it's probably, I mean, it doesn't look like it's a detached cover. Like, you can tell here, like, that staple right here looks good. The staple down here looks good. It's like, why, why did somebody add these extra staples to the book? I have no idea. I wonder, I might, like, remove them. But, uh, but yeah, I, like most of them, I think had extra staples, if not all of them, which I was like, no, these books aren't, <laughs> these books aren't for us. Um, but, uh, like I said, is what it is. Uh, then the next one here, um, this is Fantastic Four number 46. So first appearance of Black Bolt book that, uh, was the, uh, gosh, in one of my recent unboxings, I was so frustrated with this book. It was one that I was, I was not happy with the, uh, the grading on it. Um, not the grading from CGC, other the grading from CGC was fine. It was the grading from the seller. But yeah, like this one, it looks like it maybe doesn't even have the original staples. That does, I can see them. Okay, so it's like original staples are on the back here and here. But then again, like somebody added like a bunch of extra staples to this book. And you're just like, why? Why did you add a bunch of extra staples? But I just, yeah, I don't see, there's no way, like this is like a 4-0. <laughs> it's just like, uh, uh, yeah, no. Well. Um, but that's, that's why like you really, and that's the tough part with the lots um, because you can't see all the books. And so you're kind of, you kind of are having to take their word for it. And so I could just kind of see some of the covers and not even the full images of the covers. Um, then we've got Fantastic Four number 66, like the first cameo cameo of him. Uh, he's not actually in it, but uh, unfortunately like the least valuable one, and this is probably the, this one is probably a 4-0. No extra staples on this one. Uh, there is a stain on the back, but in general, a you know, decent presenting copy. Yeah, so unfortunately it's like the, the best probably the the best book that's in the lot um in terms of condition is probably the the least valuable of them all um then we have this one here this one actually looks like it's in relatively you know decent condition uh this is fantastic four annual number six so it's first appearance of annihilus and the first appearance of nathaniel richards as a baby this one is in decent condition this one's probably better than a four. Yeah. So look at this book here. It's got, it's not like it's perfect. You know, you can see there's some bends and stuff to the cover, but I would say this one is, is actually quite a bit better than a four. Unless there's something I'm missing. No, yeah, I'd say this one is definitely better than a four. This one might be more like a six, five, five or a six. So this one's pretty decent. That might, that might save me. <laughs> that might save me a bit in this lot. Um, Cause I was, uh, I had definitely been like 
regretting this purchase um, after I made it, but but yeah, that one, definitely better than a four. That one might save me a bit. And then this last one here, uh, this is first appearance of Ronan the Accuser, Fantastic Four number 65. And this one, this is probably, I mean, it's like at least a four, maybe a little better. It's got a little, the colors are a little faded on this copy. Um, but in general, it's pretty nice. There's a little piece it looks like out of the top back corner up here. Just a little wear, you know, like you can see down here. Um, but overall, pretty decent presenting copy of this one. Uh, was definitely a book that was pricier <laughs> um, uh, back when Ronan the Accuser made his, uh, his appearance in the MCU uh, with Guardians of the Galaxy and has fallen off quite a bit since then. Those are the five books, you know, Fantastic Four a lot. Uh, like I said, I think they graded them all as like fours or might have even been four or fives. And, uh, you know, this one might save it because this one I'd say is like five, five. Maybe, maybe it can get a six. Um, this one's probably about a four. This one's probably about a four. Uh, but then these two, I mean, this one may be like a two, five or a three. And this one like a two, two, five, something like that. I might be being a little harsh, but I don't think so. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's the lot, but that's one of the places that you can find lots. If you're looking to uh, find lots of books, uh, Heritage is a place where they do definitely bundle books together um, that you can buy as lots. All right, next book here. This is a cool one because this is, I've been talking about these pedigree books because I picked up that Cosmic Aeroplane pedigree a uh, book of Catman 28 recently, and this one came up, and this is another pedigree. And it seems like a lot of these pedigree books I'm getting are, are old labels. Uh, but this is Eerie Comics number five. And this is the uh, the Bethlehem pedigree. Now, the Bethlehem pedigrees are pretty easy to identify, and it is by this. This stamp down on the bottom. This is from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And uh, so they, I don't know if they all have that stamp, but they almost all have that stamp. So it be, it's a, some pedigrees, you, they don't have identifying marks on them. Some of them do so that they're very easily identifiable. Some of them, the only reason that they get, got the pedigrees is because they were all submitted together. And so then if it got separated, you, you can't actually link it back to the pedigree. Um, but yeah, a nice condition copy, 6.5. The Bethlehem pedigree, I think, goes up into like silver and maybe even bronze. It's one of those earlier, it's one of the, I think one of the first pedigrees that really got like the silver age pedigree, because a lot of the time it used to be just golden age. Um, but this is definitely a golden age book, 1952. Uh, Erie Comics has some fun covers. You'll, it's funny, you'll see this woman in this exact same pose appear on multiple covers. She's on, I think, three covers. And they just, they change her hair to blonde in the later ones. So it's like the exact same woman, exact same pose, everything. Uh, they just change your hair color. Um, but yeah, mummy cover, cool one. And one thing that I remember the first, I've had this book once before. The thing that threw me off is now uh, the first time I had it, this is not um, like a, a dust shadow. This is actually a design choice to have this like brownish orange, you know, as a, a line up on the top, uh, which I think definitely throws some people off because like I said, it did to me the first time I saw it. I thought maybe it was like a dark dust shadow. Um, but that's actually the, the color of the cover, but yeah. Pedigree, I might get this one sent in to get that gold label because I, I like the gold labels and I think it would probably look good with this cover. All right, now, last book here. This is the one that I think I could see James Gunn using this character. He, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to reach out to him. This case is destroyed on the back. Oh, dang it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to reach out to Heritage. Because they, they will re-slab them. They've, they've been really good about that. Um, where they'll send you a box that's prepaid. You send it back to them. They will um, uh, send it back into to CGC for you. They cover it and everything. So um, I am going to have to get Because this was just graded. And this is just totally cracked on the bottom. And it's not a small crack. But I could see James Gunn using this character. Um, I thought that... Uh, uh, and, and I like the cover. I think it's a fun cover. Um, but this is showcase number 55. And so this is the first Silver Age appearance of Solomon Grundy. Also the first solo Golden Age Green Lantern in the Silver Age. 
uh, and Origin of Our Man. Uh, so lots of little things with this one, but it's a it's a fun purple cover. I I, just, I like those like solid cover backgrounds. And um, I think Solomon Grundy is a character that I could see James Gunn using. Uh, I, I think that could definitely happen. Um, but uh, people often ask what these stickers are. These stickers are just these like made up pedigrees from Heritage. <laughs> They don't, they don't really, they aren't real pedigrees. They don't really do anything. It's just like they got a collection of books. They throw a sticker on it. And sometimes people seem to pay more money for them, but you shouldn't. Um, but, uh, cause yeah, it's just a sticker. It has nothing to do with CGC. It's just a sticker that's sitting on this that anybody could just peel off. Um, but the crack on the case is this. Uh, so that's not small. There's two of them actually. It's like this one down on the bottom here and then this right here. So, uh, there's no way that was cracked in this box. The, the box was in good shape, so it had to have been cracked when they got it. Um, and so, and a lot of times they're good about catching that before they ship it out, but must have missed it this time. So I will have to call them and get this one re-slabbed. But yeah, 8.5, which is a really solid grade for this book. This book is pretty tough in higher grades because of the, the solid dark background. And uh, this one looks every bit of an 8.5. I mean almost looks nicer than an 8.5. It's got a little ding up in this corner that, that probably hurts it a little bit. But I mean, yeah, this is a, this is a very nice presenting 8.5 of this book. Yeah, that's like tempting to see if that could press out. Cause yeah, this book just, it jumps very quickly as you move up in grades. Um, Cause yeah, you can definitely see it's like the focus of the damage is like this top corner here, but yeah. 8.5, Showcase 55, we'll be sending it back, unfortunately, uh, to get it re-slabbed, but, um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Some cool books, like I said, if you're looking for lots, Heritage is a place that you can definitely find, you know, lots like that, like that Fantastic Four, a uh, lot, had some other cool books in here. This one, I mean, this is definitely, I'd say this is definitely like the rarest book, this Chilling Tales 15, these are, these are pretty tough to come by, but that, uh, Double cover, Tales from the Crypt is pretty cool too. Like double, double cover, Tales from Crypt 38, 5.5. So hope you enjoyed this video. First unboxing video of the year, plenty more to come. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, I've got more videos over here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, we'd really appreciate it. Subscription button is right around here. And then I will see you in the next video.